The candidates may be seated. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, the staff, the families and friends of the graduates and members of this, our graduating class. Welcome to this commencement ceremony for our Berkeley MBA for Executives class of 2017. I am Rich Lyons, Dean of the Haas School of Business. It's my duty and great pleasure to officiate here at the ceremony today. It's a celebration of your personal achievements for having persevered for these 19 months. It's a rigorous management and leadership curriculum. They have mastered new skills and abilities, all the while managing uh, challenging jobs, manage maintaining active uh, family lives, active social lives. Many of you traveled long distances every three weeks to take your classes. We know this wasn't, this wasn't easy. Finding ways to balance all of these commitments, it's, it's nothing short of remarkable. We applaud you for it. After this, you can surely accomplish anything. This is also a celebration of your class as a whole. The way you have come together as a group, as a team, really, is nothing short of extraordinary. Your class is leaving its mark on our institution and contributing to the experiences of those who come after you. You've set a standard. Today, finally, it marks this, this last time we will, I will preside over a commencement, not finally, but I uh, look forward to to the end of the academic year, the formal academic year, but it's also a time where, when after 11 years of my serving as dean, uh, this is my last year, so it's the last year that I will get a chance to oversee the commencement for this remarkable program. Uh, one of the greatest highlights of my time as your dean uh, is the creation of the, the Berkeley MBA program for executives. That was 2013. This new program, it allowed us to deeply embed our unique uh, Haas culture and values driven, these are values driven leadership principles really, into the learning experience of the students. Um, we're proud of this program, we're proud of you. Uh, it's an immensely talented group that you have before you and this is, this is an immensely engaged group of leaders as well. So these people are making Haas proud. We thank them for it. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Um, I have just a few minutes to try and sum up the experience of these remarkable people here, and this is an impossible task, really. Uh, so much has been built into these 19 months for you and for us. Um, you've come every three weeks um, for, for classes uh, and team learning. You've gone on the road to deepen your experiences with five immersion programs, uh, leadership communications in Napa with Mark Rittenberg, who is here, applied innovation in San Francisco with Sarah. Sarah is here. You had a week in, on entrepreneurship in the si Silicon Valley with Toby Stewart. Tech Ho was with you in Singapore for a week, and Professor Maura O'Neill uh, in public policy and, and government and all the ways that business and our public sector interact in Washington, D.C. Our professors and students set a new standard of excellence for executive MBA programs with this type of uh, innovative hands-on learning with such a central role to be played for the learning by doing because these are, these are our most advanced uh, graduate students in terms of the depth of their career and the experiences they bring into the program. Because of these collective experiences while you were here, you were transformed in a number of ways. I want to focus on just a few of them. First is the way that you have been transformed. We have all been transformed because of, of Haas and Berkeley. Uh, I personally know how this works uh, as someone who earned his undergraduate degree from this remarkable institution. Berkeley and Haas take you by the collar and they, they it shakes you and it says you have more degrees of freedom to live your life than you realize, now go use them. And that is important advice. It's important to remind ourselves of that advice. Um, you are able to see things in yourself that you couldn't even see before. That's part of that experience. Take full advantage of the new array of possibilities. When people ask me, you know, how can the MBA be that valuable? And the optionality that you cannot see when you're coming in 
and you start to realize, my gosh, the playing field that is available to me now on the tail end is enormous. Remind ourselves, all of us, of, this, of these degrees of freedom and just how many of them we have and how well we're taking advantage of them in our lives. Second, a second transformation. You experienced one during your time here, moving from, as you've heard me say, the students have heard me say, moving from they do that, like starting companies, or it could be really anything. We, we arrive at Berkeley often thinking, starting companies, they do that. And then at some point in the program, we realize, I do that. From they do that to I do that. You know, when we are at our best as educators, we are in the identity change business. Do we deliver knowledge on accounting and strategy and finance? We have to. Of course we do. Right? And we get people even better than when they came in at, at thinking in various ways, whether it's critical thinking or systems thinking or or design thinking, but right at the top of the stack are these identity transformations when you walk out of this place thinking, I do that, and you came in thinking they do that. What's that worth? That is just immensely valuable. These transformations are possible because of how and what you've learned here about leadership. In short, you have become Berkeley leaders. What exactly is a Berkeley leader? Berkeley leaders work with and through others to envision, envision solutions to our most difficult problems. They energize other people. They create meaning around themselves and for other people. And they live those defining principles, those defining leadership principles, out loud in their behavior. Our MBA students here know these principles by heart. Question the status quo. Berkeley leaders speak their minds even when it challenges convention. They're always asking themselves, isn't there a better way to do this? That is not just one for one with intelligence. There are a lot of very intelligent people who don't naturally ask themselves, there's got to be a better way to do this. Uh, that's the mindset we're looking for, and it's the mindset that is part of the ethos that is Berkeley. A second one, confidence without attitude. The firm belief of this institution that confidence comes without arrogance. Berkeley leaders make Decisions based on evidence and analysis, that gives us the confidence to act without arrogance. And we work very hard to lead through trust and collaboration. A third one, students always. You wouldn't be here if this didn't already describe you, but it goes, it's more than just curiosity and lifelong learning. Will we understand when we're at the top of our careers that we still have feedback to hear, that we're not fully baked? Do the people who work with and for us know that we know that? That one's an easy one to forget as we get deeper into our lives and our careers. And a fourth one, by no means last, beyond yourself. Beyond yourself. Uh, I, we often use the phrase, officers eat last. Everybody knows what that phrase means. Uh, we also know that we've worked for and with Officers eat first people. There are a lot of successful business people who are officers eat first people. Nobody's going to stand up here and say, oh, no, no, you can't, you can't succeed if, unless you're this way. But we are this way. Pardon my language, but God damn it, it's time to take a stand on values. And these are some of the values that we're taking a stand on. So when we talk about beyond yourself, we really mean a sense of stewardship. And it, those are the sorts of people that engender the kind of trust and followership that leadership is made of. So those four principles, they reflect who you have been as students, they reflect who you were before you got here to a degree, that's part of why we selected you for this program, and of course we expect them to characterize you and how you are understood by others as you leave here and move through your careers. You are launching this next stage of your lives at a time of both great promise and great uncertainty. Our world is really at a remarkable moment when you read books that say by 2100 and maybe sooner the natural end of life for a human being may be indeterminate. That we may indeed have technologies that are so good at addressing dementia and Alzheimer's and amyloid plaque and all the rest of it that my 57 year old brain can be sharpened to think more like a 30 year old brain. And that microsensors can be in our bloodstream and helping our organs regenerate themselves during our lives. That's a world where we could all still be ended by getting hit by the proverbial bus, but in the lifetimes of our kids, there may be no natural end point to life. 
And that's a remarkable thing. And we are staring at that. It's fearsome. It's remarkable. It's part of mythology. It's been part of human mythology forever. And that is sort of a part of the world that we're looking at. So when we think about some of the things we need to get done together over the next generation or two, they are that fundamental. And it's going to take all of our wisdom to do that together. I look forward to seeing how you as Berkeley leaders take what you have learned here to make our world and our economy better for everyone. You will be joining a long line of Berkeley alumni who have used their education creatively to make their mark in the world. Before I move on, I have an important update. I'm thrilled to report that your class, this class that sits before you, donated to Haas more than $145,000 with 96% of the class participating. This is by far the most of any student gift campaign has ever raised in the history of this school. It's a demonstration of beyond yourself. Thank you. You know, at the highest level, the institutions that matter most to us, whether it's our church or whatever it is for you, those institutions will outlive us. We need them to do work we can have confidence in long after we are here. That is why we as leaders invest in the institutions that mean the most to us. And that's part of what you have done here, and we appreciate it. The majority of you are also being honored as the newest members of our Haas, what we call our Haas Leadership Society, which means you've donated more than $500. You're being recognized by the gold stole that you are wearing here today. And let me, let me help tell the story in an even richer way because the students all know this part of the story. This spirit of going beyond yourselves, it extends to your classmate, Sumit Shah, and his wife, Asta, who endured the indescribable loss of their infant during this program. Our hearts go out to you, Sumit and Asta. Sumit described their daughter, Sanaya, as their, quote, little warrior princess, a true fighter to the very end who never gave up, end quote. In memory of their little warrior princess, your class has established the Sanaya Shah Memorial Fund and dedicated the entirety of this year's class gift to establishing a grant fund for Haas entrepreneurs who are underrepresented minorities and whose ventures have a social impact vision. That is a terrific thing to have done. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of you who invested back in Haas in this way. I'd like to extend a special uh, thanks to your philanthropy committee, and there are a number of names here. I, 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 let me get through all of them, and then I do want to give them a round of applause because we greatly appreciate it. Kevin Blake, Michael Uchida, John Elia, Mahesh uh, Papudesi, Rika Lindstrom, Helen Drislane, Sumit Shah, and the team was led by Tina Summers, who worked tirelessly to reach out to every classmate and explain the significance of the gift. Thank you to all of those people. <laughs> and finally, I want to offer special recognition to a group of individuals. They've worked really hard to make this day possible for all of you, the soon-to-be graduates. That's right, I'm talking about the spouses, the partners, the parents, the children, the family, the friends of all these graduating students in the audience today. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. You nurtured them, you supported them. These women and men are just remarkable. You coached them, you cajoled them at, from, at times. You, you stood steadfastly by them in these busy days. All right, let me introduce now our student speaker. 
Uh, it, it is a pleasure to have the, the student perspective. We always have a student that, that represents the class. And our, our speaker here today, uh, Eli Andrews, is, is not just a student speaker. He is also this class's uh, president. Uh, life doesn't stop when you're in this, our EMBA program, and the 2017 class knows this more than any other class we've had. Eli was an inspiring force during times of tumult, life and death, literally, in the program, the North Bay fires, many other uh, very intense events that kept, and he and, and the whole class kept the spirit and the cohort strong. In the words of a fellow student, quote, Eli is a pure embodiment of the Haas defining principles. Moreover, he is able to communicate important, heartfelt messages with eloquence. He has led our class with poise, and I feel he would be the perfect person to end this chapter of our professional, professional development here. Eli tries every day to show confidence without attitude as he takes the new skills he's acquired at Haas and applies them to his career and personal life. His time here has taught him to never allow yourself and your skills to become stale, to always seek out something new to learn. It is my pleasure to introduce Eli Andrews, class of 2017. Washington, D.C. last month, one of our mentors, uh, our own Professor Mara O'Neill, introduced us to Mike. Mike is the chief minority counsel at the U.S. Senate, and we met him just days before the tax reform bill was about to pass. Mike knew that this was a deeply flawed bill, but as Minority Council, there was little that he could do to impact it. And so Mike brought his sleeping bag with him to the U.S. Senate so that he could spend every possible moment he had fighting to insert any word, any comma that he felt would serve the American people. Mike is in love with democracy. That's his genius. That's the light that he has to share with the world. Let there be light. Those are the words that are inscribed on UC Berkeley's official seal. Let there be light. And as we graduate this year, Cal is celebrating its 150th birthday. So thank you for 150 years of bright light UC Berkeley. For 19 months, we have struggled together. We have overcome together. And serving as your president and representing you today as your class speaker is one of the great honors of my life. This week, we also celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And at this juncture in our American history, I feel impelled to say this. We miss your boundless compassion, Dr. King. We miss your vision for our different races, our different religions, our different skin colors. We miss the beautiful symphony that you began conducting out of our discord. We miss your leadership, Dr. King. Speaking of leadership, Dean Lyons, uh, we understand that this is your last, your last EMBA graduation, and so I want to pause for a moment to express our gratitude. You leave behind quite a legacy, Rich Lyons, but none of it resonates with us more than those defining principles. Question status quo. Students always. Beyond yourself. Confidence without attitude. Now, outside of Haas, those might be seen like a marketing slogan, 
But as you know, Dean Lyons, they represent both who we are and who we aspire to be. And you said about these principles that you had just uncovered a culture that had been latent at UC Berkeley Haas, and I'm sure that's true. Uh, Michelangelo also said that he saw the forms of the statues in the stone and just carved away the irrelevant parts until he had set the statues free. So thank you, Dean Lyons, for seeing the defining principles in us, and thank you for se setting them free. We all had good reasons for joining this program, for embarking on this journey. Uh, but the truth is that each one of us was already successful. We could have kept going along the paths that we were on. We didn't need to come to this program. So my question to all of you right now is, why are you here? Yes, some of you were bumping up against glass ceilings. Uh, many of you were shackled to your former roles and skills. Some of us wanted better jobs, better careers. Uh, all of us wanted to learn. And Anj and Hari needed to find each other to make those magic fireworks happen. <clears throat> yeah. We all, whether we were engineers or consultants or former military, we all uh, had a lot to benefit from getting a Berkeley MBA, but I believe that there is a deeper reason for why we are here. I believe that each one of us is here to discover and to develop the unique value that we have to bring to this world. If you were like me, you had doubts. Doubts about the debt, doubts about whether or not you were as qualified as everyone else here. If you were like me, you also had someone who helped you overcome those doubts. For me, that was my most trusted advisor, uh, my wife, Linda. She's uh, a PhD student just down the hill on campus. So uh, as I was struggling with this decision, Linda said to me, she said this, she said, Eli, I know one thing. I believe in education. I believe in Berkeley education, and I believe in you. So thank you, Linda, for leading me to the threshold of this journey. <laughs> and to all of you who have helped shape who we are, to all of you who have taught us to all of you who have cared so deeply for our development, to our parents, to our grandparents, to our teachers, to our program office. Thank you for helping us to develop the unique value that we have to bring to this world. I remember when Greg LeBlanc, LeBlanc Professor Greg, Greg LeBlanc, first uh, started putting up equations on the whiteboard, and I looked around Coret, that's our classroom, and uh, I looked around at all of you, and it seemed like all of you were nodding your heads, as if, as if those long strings of Greek letters and numbers made sense. They did not make sense, not, not to me. I was challenged there, but you all had my back. Our friend, our colleague Ashuk, came to Berkeley every weekend of that term and coached me until I got it. Who were your coaches? How were you challenged on this journey? So as we came into classes uh, on our blocks, it felt like we had created this world where we were all challenging each other, where we were all becoming stronger together. And sometimes, in truth, it felt like there was a disconnect between this world and, and our daily lives, as if we'd uh, carved out this safe, insulated space for ourselves. And then, and then Sumit and Asta lost Sanaya, and something else happened 
when they lost Sanaya, we also lost Sanaya. And I think that that was the first moment that we all realized that this class is a family. And we established the Sanaya Shah Memorial Fund in order to invest in people and in, in projects that represent some of the ways that Sanaya might have contributed. And so this is one way that our legacy uh, will live on uh, with Sanaya's. And look, this is, this is who we are. This is who we are as a community. We believe in legacy. We believe in family. We've got each other's backs. Our life trajectories are not what they were before we joined this program. Our lives have been changed. And what you feel inside of you right now is real. It is a light that you will carry forward with you. And as leaders, part of your active service is to share this light with those whose lives you touch. You are stewards and guardians of the future. It's time to share your genius with the world. I love you all. Here's to the next 150 years of light. Thank you for those, those words, Eli. Discover the unique value you bring to the world. You know, that, that is an important part when I mentioned from they do that to I do that. It's, it's, we don't always know what that unique value is, and part of the discovery of a program like this is getting an even sharper sense so that you can follow that advice. We are each other's coaches. I mean, this, we, we talk about what the students do for one another, I mean, imagine being part of a team where everybody is totally invested in one another's success. I mean, that's really what happens in this program. They lift one another. It's part of why they advance so far in 19 months. And share this light with those you touch. And we do talk in the program about this point in one's life where you start to realize, wait a minute. It's partly my responsibility, my responsibility to instill a larger sense of purpose in the people around me. I don't just get to feed on the purpose that I get from great institutions and great people. I need to start creating it for the people around me, from purpose consumer to purpose creator. It's another one of the fundamental transformations that happens in the program. Thank you for pointing those out. Eli. Each year, we have called upon an alum of uncommon distinction to address the MBA graduating class as our commencement speaker. We seek a person who embodies a commitment to excellence, possesses a distinguished record of achievement, as well as someone who works to make the world a better place through her or his efforts. This year, we are delighted that the Berkeley MBA for Executive Program commencement speaker is just such a leader, and she is one of our own. This is Carisha McGee. Carisha is a graduate of the Berkeley Columbia MBA class. That was 2012. She's an award-winning communications and marketing executive. She has more than 16 years of experience in the high-tech industry. Throughout her career, she has advised C-level and senior executives at large multinationals, startups, and venture capital firms. She started her career at a boutique public relations firm in San Francisco, where she honed the craft of storytelling and bringing technology to life for customers, partners, and key industry influencers. From there, she continued the communications field moving to a senior position with BEA Systems, a $1.2 billion enterprise software company acquired by Oracle. Courageous work at, at Cisco for much of her career, serving as an integral member of the executive communications team 
for John Chambers, then chairman and CEO. In this unique role, part chief of staff, part uh, speechwriter, she supported Mr. Chambers at numerous high-profile speaking opportunities, including the World Economic Forum and the Clinton Global Initiative. Following that, she led communications for Cisco's chief marketing officer and the chief globalization officer. Last May, she branched out to a new venture, making the move to a $3.8 billion startup, a work chat startup that most all of you know that are in the front of the room, Slack, where she now leads corporate government communications. We eagerly await to hear more on both Slack and Courageous career, both of which are clearly on such an upward trajectory. Outside work, Caracia is an avid music fan and adventurer. Early on, she spent a year in Barcelona singing jazz at local clubs. She was formerly the lead singer of a rock soul fusion band called Jam for Dinner and is an alum member of Culture Shock, a professional hip hop dance troupe in Oakland. She embodies our defining principles, all of them, and most especially beyond yourself with her commitment to giving back to her Bay Area community as an active member and board member for multiple youth organizations. She's been an active friend to our school as well, giving her time to speak at our diversity workshop and other alumni and student conferences over the years. I could not be more proud to call Croatia a fellow alum. She is an exemplar of the Berkeley leader. She makes us proud not only with her many career accomplishments, but also in her adherence to those principles we spoke about earlier. Please join me, warm welcome, Carisha McGee. Thanks. Good afternoon, and hello, graduates. First, let me thank Dane Lyons for that wonderful and lovely introduction and for your service to this school, this program, and this community. For your spirit, your passion, and of course, your music, we thank you. I'd also like to thank the distinguished faculty and staff for welcoming me. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you on this joyful day. Now, I know this has already been covered, but I would also like to thank the parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, alums, coworkers, and pets, because some of us need to give a shout out for our four-legged friends, uh, who have supported you on this journey. This is an extraordinary day and a day to be celebrated. Now, Eli touched on this a little bit, and I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that these are, in fact, very interesting times. There's a lot happening in the world today geopolitical, economic, social, environmental strife. Regardless of which side you're on, regardless of your point of view, I think we can all agree that the daily assault of news stories, the whiplash from news alerts, did you hear this, did you see that, it's exhausting. Add to this whatever may be going on in your personal lives, your family, your kids, your work, the cacophony of it all, it's heavy, and it can put a damper on things. But not today. Not today, no, no, not today, not here, not right now. For these next few hours, we're gonna celebrate and we're gonna focus on the joy and the blessing of this moment. So push your shoulders back, raise your heads up high, and focus on the joy and blessing of this moment. That's all we're gonna do right now. If I see you on Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter, the only thing I want you to be talking about is joy, celebration, and happiness. Can we do that? You with me? Perfect. Now, I'm a few years out from this experience. I graduated in 2013, as Dean Lyons mentioned. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you, I began reflecting on how this day felt for me. I remember sitting where all of you are, and I remember the feelings I had, all the feels. I was elated. I know that this is not what we mean when we say beyond yourself, but let me tell you, I was beyond myself with joy. <laughs> So happy and full of pride, grinning, my cheeks hurt, snapping pictures, hugging friends, giggling, and texting with classmates during the commencement speeches, as I'm sure some of you are doing right now. <laughs> Part of what I was also doing was reflecting on the past 18, 19 months of this experience and all that it took me to get to this point. So a few stats for you, and these are totally back of the envelope calculations, so please don't hold me to them. 147, 
the number of hot teas, coffees, and classic oatmeals from Star Starbucks, shout out to my Shattuck, Willow Glen, and Palo Alto locations, I consumed to keep me energized during my multiple tutoring sessions. 64, the number of trail mixes, granola bars, and bottles of water my family brought me to keep me energized as snacks during school. 175 conference calls for group projects, 36 Dropbox folders created, two laptops, two cell phones, and nine pounds lost, gained, then lost again over the course of the program. Now, what should we take away from these numbers? Well, a couple of things. So first of all, I know I gave my shout out to Starbucks, but for real, I should have platinum status for the, number of the amount of money that I dropped at all those locations. Second, I know we refer to this as the executive MBA, but with all due respect, the E, it really stands for extra. Because you already had a job, and yet it's a bunch of extra work, a bunch of extra time, a bunch of extra pain, extra pounds, extra blessings, of course, but really, it is exceptional the level of extra that's on this degree. The juggling, the balance, the feat of scheduling gymnastics that's required. You think about this. Some of you gave a presentation at work and then turned around, hopped in the car, drove up here to Berkeley, and gave a presentation for your leadership communications class. Others of you stayed up all night doing some research for your child science fair project and then turned around and did a bunch of research for your FP&A class. And oh, by the way, you chose to do this. <laughs> You paid for this extra. You filled out an application and wrote a bunch of essays, essays, some of you practically begging for this extra. So be proud of that and sit in that. All of the extra that you did, this is truly a celebration of that today. Third, and, and most importantly, and this has been touched on a little already, but when I think about my experience here and all of those numbers I ticked off, I'm reminded that I didn't do this alone. I had help. There were a lot of community of people supporting me, lifting me up and rooting for me when I didn't even realize it. From professors like Professor Beckman, P. Tiff, Paul Tiffany, who stayed after class to help with a problem set, to fellow classmates who led impromptu review sessions and helped me get through regression analysis. To family and friends whom I never saw, but still found time to text me to let me know they were thinking about me, or who didn't make me feel guilty for missing yet another happy hour or Sunday brunch because I was either studying or frankly, just too exhausted to get out of bed. My coworkers who helped me catch up on important office updates and who didn't bat an eye when I rolled in Monday morning looking bleary-eyed and a bit scattered because my mind was still reliving the statistics final I'd taken a few days before. <laughs> Even the barista at the local Phil's coffee, shout out to Phil's too, I go to all the coffee shops, clearly I'm an equal opportunity coffee enthusiast who was in the middle of closing up one night already doors locked and I banged on the door and he made me a wonderfully strong coffee so that I could get through my final exam that was due the next morning. I had a lot of help and so did you. So again, we celebrate that today. This community, this is what it's all about. Now of course, on this day in 2013, in addition to reminiscing, I was also looking to the future, as you should. And when I was sitting there, I was feeling a little bit like, whew, I've made it. I've got this, this degree, this experience, what? I am on my way. Now, there was this fundamental transformation that had occurred for me during this program. I realized that up until this point, I had been thinking way too small. I was not thinking big enough about the impact that I could have on the world, not only in business, but in life. And so on graduation day, and this is not to negate anything I had achieved up until this point, but I really did have a sense of, hey, this is it. I am on my way. And all that is true, but what I'm here to tell you, and I'm speaking directly to you, my fellow graduates, is that while this is an extraordinary achievement, this is not all there is. Relish in the thought of flexing your new skills at work, eating dinner at a reasonable hour, seeing some friends you haven't seen in ages, or getting more than a few hours of sleep. But whatever you do, don't think that this is it. Today marks an incredible milestone in your career, your life, your personal, your professional development, but it's just one step. And here's the thing. You have no idea. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better. And it can sometimes get a little worse. Since I've graduated, I'd love to tell you that it's been all sunshine and roses, but the reality is that's just not how things go. For me, after graduation, I continued working and continued working, and then a little over a year after I'd graduated, I landed what I thought was my next dream job high growth tech startup, and this is, this is not Slack we're talking about, high growth tech startup, a global company, building a brand new function, working with incredibly smart and talented people. 
crazy intense hours, solving hard problems. It was great. I thought, this is it. I am on my way. And less than a year later, boom, I was laid off. Me, I'm Cornell undergrad, Berkeley Columbia grad, 15 plus years of experience, award winning, top of my game, and I was restructured, laid off. I didn't even make it a full year. Now I know I'm not the first person to have ever experienced this. Folks get laid off all the time, but let me tell you, it was devastating. It was a gut punch. I didn't want to tell my friends. I didn't want to tell my family. It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. I remember in the days and weeks following when I was trying to figure out what to do next. Again, we talked about community. I was trying to reach out to friends, to my Berkeley Columbia classmates, and also just trying to make sure that I made it out of the house every day. During that time, I was reminded of a sermon that the pastor of a church I used to attend had preached. And it focused on a verse from the Bible, John chapter 15, verse 2. Now let me just do a quick timeout and pause for a quick second, because I know for some of you I just messed up. I just said church, pastor, and Bible in the same sentence, and I know some of you are like, oh, where is she going with this? <laughs> Here's the deal. I get it. I'm a Christian, and the Bible is a book I read and refer to from time to time. But I also know that there are people here of many different faiths and religions, and we, there may be some atheists as well, and that's all good. Please don't stop listening to me just because I said those words. If the source turns you off, I'm fine with that. But listen to the message. So John chapter 15, verse 2 goes as follows. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he, God, takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he, God, prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. In particular, pay attention to that last part. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may then bear fruit. Now, for those of you who are gardening enthusiasts, you can probably get this analogy right away. But it took me a minute, so let me just explain a bit more. First, have you ever seen the tools that someone uses to prune a tree or a bush? Sharp, pointy clippers, shears, serious tools with serious blades. Now, I've never been a plant or a tree or a flower, but the thing is, and this is what my pastor was pointing out, pruning hurts. Pruning, and whatever you want to call it, rejection, loss, setbacks, whatever it is, it's uncomfortable. It sucks. Clipping off wilted flowers or dead leaves, that makes sense to me. But the thing about that last line is even when the branch bears fruit, even when you are at the top of your game, you can still go through some more pruning. Think about a rose bush in full bloom. At times, you may have to clip a few roses in order to get a few more. It seems counterintuitive, but it has to be done. So now, really quickly, back to my story. I'd gotten laid off, and again, I know I'm not the first and only person who have ever had this happen to, to them, but for me, my job was one of, if not the biggest part of my identity. You can argue whether or not that's right or wrong, but for real, I'm standing here today at one of the best business schools in the country, so I'm gonna bet that there are a lot of us type A driven, career-minded men and women here today, and our job is a really huge part of who we are. And in hindsight, that layoff, that pruning, Though it was awful, it was actually a blessing for two reasons. First, that pruning, that loss, and I'm not just talking about the physical trappings, the loss of the actual job or the wages, etc., but also, and this is hard to admit, the pruning of my ego ultimately prepared me to bear more fruit. I was really feeling myself. I had just gotten my MBA, remember? And if I'm being honest, I was ready for a level set. The layoff forced me to take a step back and to reevaluate my sense of self and gain a perspective and balance on my life. It forced me to revisit those principles I had learned here in the Berkeley Columbia community and to spend some time with myself figuring out who I am. And I'm still on that journey. Now, when we think about it, and let's just keep the gardening theme going because, hey, why not? At every phase or season in our lives, there are periods of growth and there are also periods of loss or rejection or pruning. Growth can be fun, invigorating, inspiring, and challenging. And pruning, let's face it, like I said, it sucks. But wow, when you come out on the other side, think about your time in this program. And again, I know it's been touched on before. Think about the highs and the lows, the growth and the pruning, the laughter and the tears. How often as adults, at this time in our careers, do we get a chance to experience something so intense? And this is the larger message I want to leave with you today, and this is really the good news, because again, this is all about joy today. Through my experience, not just the layoffs, but this program right here, by looking inward and reflecting on all of the challenges, but also the strengths that I had sharpened here in school, I recognize that my stock 
and that's S-T-A-L-K, and my roots, my vine, was so much stronger than I'd ever imagined. It wasn't easy, but as I discovered a new sense of self and a new and even, a new and even more fulfilling role came my way. For all of you, having completed these last 19 months, having met the people you've met, having challenged yourself at every turn, your stock, again, S-T-A-L-K, because I know we're in the valley, so everybody's thinking about other stocks. Today, your stock is stronger now, and that is what we are truly celebrating today. You are better, you are fuller, and you are a more resilient person because of this experience that you had over the past 19 months. You've been nourished, enriched, and fortified by this community of friends and faculty and family around you. So today, we celebrate that. In closing, if you'd permit me to offer two words of advice, tactical things, super, super tactical. So first, we talked a little bit about community, and I know this has been said, but at the end of this day, go back through the list of people who helped you on this journey. Your friends and family are obvious, clearly those who were lucky enough to get tickets to come to this, um, but think about those folks that you may have forgotten or neglected. The person who wrote your letters of recommendation, when was the last time you talked to them? The coworker who covered for you on a project? Your tutors and next door neighbor? If you have a coffee guy, thank them. Take a deliberate moment to go out of your way and thank them. And for your family and friends whom you may have missed, don't just shoot them an email or drop off a bottle of wine. Give them your time. Take them out to dinner, take them out to brunch, share what you've learned, and Eli touched on this too. Talk about your experiences, but also pass this education and this learning along. We all know that for every one of you who is here in this room, there is someone, a friend, a family member, or a colleague, who for whatever reason, financial, didn't have the grades, didn't have the GMAT scores, is not here today. So when you go back and you thank people, share your experiences as well. And then two, and this is gonna be seeming a little bit random, but one of the things I loved about graduation day when I think about that day back in 2013 was my outfit. <laughs> this robe, this cape, the hood, it kind of feels like a superhero cape. Now I remember in undergrad, and this is not to diss undergrad, but you know, it was just kind of floppy, sort of random sleeves. You make an extra tassel here and there for honors or whatnot, but it was just kind of eh, but this, Feel this, you look so elegant, so regal, but feel it, it's a bit more substantive. It's a bit heavier, and even though it's a hood, there's a hood involved, it actually sort of makes you feel like you could fly, right? Superman, Wonder Woman, Kylo Ren, like whomever you're gigging with, <laughs> think about this cape and this hood. And what I would ask is that when you're outside taking pictures, and I know a lot of you have been doing this already, go ahead and take a picture of yourself, but also take it unzipped and take a picture of yourself with your hood and your coat and your cape on, but also in your street clothes. Um, I took one, I brought it today. And the real deal is I wasn't thinking about it as a cape or a Superman or Wonder Woman thing on that day. The reality was I had been wearing my graduation gear all day. I was super hot. I had a fabulous red dress on that I wanted everybody to see. So at the very end of the day, I unzipped it and my aunt snapped the photo, which is what we have here. And the reality is, you're on this high right now, and it's gonna stay with you for quite some time. Then there's gonna be a little bit of withdrawal. You've probably had nearly two years of intense day-to-day -day contact. And then all of a sudden, at some point, that may fade just a little bit. You're gonna sell some of your books back. Maybe you won't see people quite as often. You text nonstop, but maybe the text will be a little bit less frequent. You have the best intentions, of course. You'll go to every happy hour and get together, but then life happens, a job change, you may move. The reality is you're gonna go through some highs and some lows, some growth and some pruning. And what I say to you is take that picture in your cape, in your superhero robe, and put it up. So when you have those moments of feeling down or in despair, you can look at that and you can remind yourself of how you felt on this day. And if things get really tough, don't forget you have this community. We've got you. Dean Lyons, the faculty, the administration, me, we've got you. We've got you. So. Congratulations again, and go get them. Thank you. Thank you for that, Karesha. You know, the, the pruning hurts and resiliency message is, is enormous. I, one of the things that I've noticed when I'm speaking to the most senior people at some of the biggest companies that we, that we all know is, you know, when they think about hiring a senior, senior person, uh, it's, the pool is so rich and the experience is so wide that 
resilient, somebody who can take a gut punch. Do I have some evidence that this person, when it's gonna get tough and it's gonna get tough and this is a big job, are you gonna be there? And that's one of the deciders when people get a job or they don't, is whether they can handle that moment. Fundamental. You know, and being intentional about thanks, and also, I mean, the cape, I, I don't admit this to very many people, but occasionally in my office, when I have a big meeting, I'll put this cape on, and I'll get pumped up before my meeting. So you should try that, too. You can try that at home. Okay, thank you, Carisha, very, very much for that talk. We, we greatly appreciate it. It's my pleasure now to turn our attention and introduce my Berkeley Haas, Haas colleague. It says here, my Berkeley Haas colleague, my Berkeley Haas friend, Jay Stowski, our Senior Assistant Dean for Instruction. He oversees all the instruction for all of our programs, and he will present our Teacher of the Year Award. We call it our Chite Award for Excellence in Teaching. Jay Stowski. Thanks, Jay. How are you doing so far? Good. Me too. Once a year, I get to emerge from the dean's office. <laughs> Rich lets me out. And one of the great pleasures of my job is to be able to present on your behalf the Chite Award for Excellence in Teaching. The Chite Award is named after our late dean, Emeritus Earl Chite, Bud Chite, a gentleman and a scholar, the embodiment of the Berkeley leader. He established these awards in 1976. These awards are not a popularity contest. They are judged by student committees on the basis, yes, of excellence in teaching, but also on the basis of an apparent and sincere concern for the individual development of students. There were many incredibly worthy nominees for the Chite Award this year. I'm very proud of the quality and commitment of the faculty teaching in this program as borne out by your evaluations of their courses and their teaching, the highest and most consistent among our six degree programs at the Haas School. So to win the EMBA Chite Award is to be acknowledged as a standout among standouts. But to win a Chite Award three times in a row is extraordinary. This year's winner has accomplished that feat, Dr. Mara O'Neill. <laughs> Let me, let me tell our guests a little bit about Mara. Having started four companies and worked as President Obama's Chief Innovation Officer at the U.S. Agency for International Development, she's perhaps best described as a serial entrepreneur and investor. She's also a graduate of the Berkeley Columbia MBA program. And I'm delighted to report she has increasingly, increasingly committed herself to teaching. I know Mara is proud of these accomplishments. I expect she's equally proud of a new milestone that occurred this past fall when she became a grandmother for the first time. Mara is frequently lauded as a connector, but she does more than connect people. She invests and takes pride in them. She values their uniqueness and the special relationships that creates. Many of the highlights she mentions from the last year, at least those she shares on social media, have been about the people she's mentored rather than her own accomplishments. Allow me to share one of the many student comments about Mara. Mara O'Neill exemplifies excellence in how she builds her curriculum and shapes the classroom discussion, all while infusing deep wisdom from her vast personal and professional experience. She does this generously, fiercely, and with style and bold integrity. 
She invests significant care and energy, bringing in world-class outside speakers, enriching the educational experience. Mara O'Neill is exceptional. In her new venture finance and DC Immersion Week courses, Mara sought, brought a special blend of theory and real-world applications through a variety of lectures, speakers, speakers chosen and simulations chosen to demonstrate and clarify the various roles of founders, funders, employees, strategists, and VCs. But beyond her impressive resume and teaching skills is an openness and a warmth that strikes everyone who meets her from cooking a home dinner for a large number of EMBA students during an off-block trek to Seattle, to sharing her personal and professional network when students need a connection for a project, to advising and assisting students with job negotiations. And this treatment was extended to all students, not just those taking her courses. Mara's generosity, grace, and humility, her lessons, professional impact, and joie de vivre will be with the EMBA class of 2017 forever. So, for her teaching excellence, both in and outside the classroom, personal mentorship, and deep commitment to EMBA, please join me in congratulating Mara O'Neill, Distinguished Teaching Fellow, 2017 Chite Award recipient. was born in 1935 in um, Maple Heights, Ohio. She was the daughter of a social studies teacher and a coach. And she began at age 14 writing poems on scraps of paper and became one of America's most beloved um, poetresses. Um, as I was thinking about this honor and so humbled that you bestowed it on me, you saw that on Friday night when you uh, surprised me. I thought about sharing a few words of wisdom that I thought she had for all of us uh, uh, today. She said, tell me, what is your plan to do with your one uh, wild and precious life, she wrote. Instructions for living a life? Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. Listen, are you breathing just a little and calling it a life? I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. When it's over, I want to say, all my life, I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. To pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. So as you venture out secure in your heart with this accomplishment, and in your hand with this diploma, I implore you to be married to amazement and always take the world in your arms. The contribution you can and will make is nothing short of awe-inspiring. That I absolutely know. For I have been, had some, for, for you alone have something unique to give. For I am quite sure, because I am the lucky, one of the lucky ones to have known you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Maura. It also gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the Haas School Outstanding Supporting Instructor Award for the EMBA program. The supporting instructor serves as an apprentice under the active supervision of the faculty member who is the principal instructor for the course. And this year's outstanding supporting instructor goes to Veselina Denova. Veselina couldn't be here today due to a conference she's attending in New York, but we want to recognize her. She played a huge role in the success of the class of 2017 as the principal instructor during preterm and as a supporting instructor for Professor Xiaojun Zhang 
uh, in financial accounting. We heard from the award committee about Veselina's fantastic discussion sections, which were essential to helping students master the topics of the course. She was patient, kind, and gracious, which is exactly what students needed at that point in the program. She went in above and beyond to facilitate learning as the cohort came up to speed in term one. So congratulations to Veselina in New York. <clears throat> and now let's turn to our Class of 2017 Academic Achievement Award. To be the valedictorian amongst a selective group of the best and brightest MBA students, it should go without saying, is quite an accomplishment. In order to do well as a student in the executive MBA program, one needs the foundations of intelligence and the ability to compartmentalize. Work, family, friends, life, classmates, faculty, and taking full advantage of everything Haas has to offer. Not only did our valedictorian excel in the program with an impressive GPA of 3.925, but as one of his, he, he helped others excel as well. As one of his classmates put it, he's been a steadying force within our cohort, bringing smart leadership and humility to every class and to each challenge we have faced as a group. I have been honored to be his study group partner and his friend. It is my pleasure to introduce your class of 2017 valedictorian, John Ilya. Thank you. Dean Lyons, we know this is your last EMBA commencement. Your impact on Haas, this program, and this cohort is immeasurable. We are sad to see you leave as dean, but we are very excited for your continued friendship. Thank you. Distinguished faculty and staff, members of the program office, thank you for making this program everything that it is, a truly transformative experience. Friends, family, and especially spouses, partners, and children, thank you for your love and support throughout the last 19 months. Without you enduring late nights, conference calls, and our time away, none of us would be here right now. We are forever grateful. On a personal note, I'd like to thank my amazing study group, uh, Megan, Fessel, Lori, and Kevin. And I'd like to thank my beautiful and incredible wife, Sarah, and daughter, Nicole. I love you. Our macroeconomics professor, Andy Rose, was fond of asking, do you want to start with data or with theory? <laughs> well, I think I'll start with data. When we began, 47% of our class had already won at one advanced degree. 59% of our class was multilingual, including proficiency in Urdu, Hindi, Arabic, French, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese. Many of us were born in exotic locations, such as China, France, Pakistan, India, Egypt, and Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Our ranks included a shoe designing entrepreneur, a green beret, and a rocket scientist, literally. That was the composition of the class that began this program 19 months ago. On paper, we had seemingly little in common but our desire for a master's degree. And now the theory. What we did have in common is that each of us was drawn to this institution and this school based on the defining principles and its enduring culture. 
We sense something special here that we wanted to be part of. I noticed this immediately in two small but hugely significant ways. On the stressful eve of our first statistics class, and therefore our first statistics quiz, Josh asked a hot student panel, student panel, so just how important is this quiz? <laughs> At almost the same time, JB shared his statistics study guide with the entire cohort. The message to me was clear. This is a group of people focused on collaboration, not competition. We are here to complete this program, not as individual performers, but as a team. And what a team it would become. Over the course of five terms, we grew exceedingly close. We endured standing room only GSI sessions in the California room at the Durant. We spent countless hours with our study groups on late night video calls. We went for early morning runs and games of squash. We bonded together over late nights in places with such names as Pappy's, the Tonga Room, Bricks, and Quill. <laughs> we marveled at Fessel's dance moves. We watched football games and saw concerts. We started businesses. We broke bread together over countless tables across the globe. We mourned together. We celebrated together. Heck, two of us even married each other. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations again. <laughs> professor Huff, our marketing professor, told us that good theory is good theory, whether it be applied in marketing or in life. During this program, I witnessed 68 individuals who approached the world and each other with respect, compassion, and empathy. At a time when society is seemingly becoming more divided, we have embraced our differences, learned from each other, and bound ourselves together in our shared belief that our diversity makes us better and stronger. And so, at the end of 19 months, what stands before you is a family of sisters and brothers, united in their support for each other and dedicated to the principles and values this institution holds dear. I could not be more proud to be part of this family. Congratulations, Emma's. I cannot wait to see what comes next. Let me take a moment off script to say that it's an appropriate moment in giving out the Chite Awards to recognize my friend and colleague and my boss, Rich Lyons, who I think has lived up like no other leader of this institution to the example set by Bud Chait as a teacher, as a scholar, as a leader. His impact on this institution will last on each of us individually and on the school and on this campus for forever. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleagues, Jamie Breen, Assistant Dean for MBA Programs for Working Professionals, and Emma Hayes Daftari, Director of Academics and Student Experience, to present our Defining Principles Awards. Thank you, this is such a great day. Um, before we start presenting the awards though for the Defining Leadership Principles, I also want to acknowledge Dean Rich Lyons who is the moving spirit behind them. And Rich, I have heard it tell that one of the most difficult decisions you made as Dean was to move away from the Berkeley Columbia Executive MBA program and to create the Haas MBA for Executives program here. I think the graduates here today and the ones we are about to honor are a true testament to the value of that decision. So on behalf of our graduates, our students, our alumni, and those of us who are lucky enough to work with all of them and support this program, thank you for creating this incredibly valuable program.
So on to the Defining Leadership Principle Awards. Berkeley leaders champion bold ideas, take intelligent risks, and accept sensible failures. And in doing so, they need to speak their minds. Students nominated this year's Question the Status Quo winner because she has never been shy to speak her mind, whether it was popular or not. She has nerves of steel and is well respected by the cohort as a tough cookie, and because she is level-headed yet willing to tackle the hard issues. I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the EMBA 17 Question the Status Quo Award is Tansy Brooks. Thank you, but he's got it. <laughs> uh, Tansy, you might just want to hang on a minute. Now more than ever, we value confidence without attitude, making decisions based on evidence and analysis, giving confidence to act without arrogance, which allows us to lead through trust and collaboration. The EMBA 17 cohort nominated this year's recipient of the Confidence Without Attitude Award for being a brilliant marketing guru who is always quick to downplay the tremendous impact she has on each of her study groups, but delivers confident and remarkable presentations. Join us again <laughs> in congratulating Tansy Brooke as the EMBA 17 Confidence Without Attitude. As you've heard today, the EMBA program is designed for people who are coming back to school, and it's not a place for those who feel that they have learned all that they need to learn. Their commitment to being students always is demonstrated by their lifelong pursuit of personal and intellectual growth. The 2017 Students Always Award recipient is being acknowledged for being thoughtful about every subject, marrying theory and practice, and for always being open to new ideas and learning about new areas while participating heavily and enriching the overall class experience. Chin Jin Lee, you are the winner of the EMBA 17 Students Always Award. We value those who shape our world by leading ethically and responsibly, taking the longer view in our decisions and actions. Students say this year's winner of the Beyond Yourself Award is a community builder. She invests in relationships and networks in ways that are truly inspiring and puts others before herself. Sonali Patel. Please join us on stage to accept the Beyond Yourself Award.
Here in the MBA for Executives program, we also have an award that we call the fifth principle. And it is for those students who embody all of the defining principles and continuously do it with grace and graciousness. I recently found a quote from General Martin Dempsey, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on, of all places, Twitter. Um, <laughs> but it does exemplify and encapsulate what we mean by the fifth principle. Think about grace as a leadership attribute. Many meetings, among them decency, dignity, compassion, balance. From the 1528 Italian as sprezzatura, grace under pressure. Then as now, best leaders exhibit grace, being calm, inspire confidence. Today we honor two students who exemplify these characteristics. First, we recognize Hallie Higby as being consistently engaged with classmates, prospective students, alumni, and the program office in a thoughtful and insightful way, showing appreciation and graciousness in all her interactions. And we recognize John Ilya, as time and time again, he has shown himself to be the rare combination of leader, friend, and mentor. He's continually, continually gone above and beyond to assist both his classmates and the program office in any way that he can. John, we're excited to present you. Thank you both for your contributions to the EMBA cohort and culture. Jonathan Gruen. Ashok Sun, excuse me. Ashok Sundaranjan. Jacob Kislevitz. <laughs> Eric Nagrevsky. Tina Summers. Lori Etheridge. Eileen Nguyen. (laughs) 
Robert Ethier. Munir Merchant. Rose Maisner. Megan Sinclair. <laughs> Helen Drizzlane. Sumit Shah. <laughs> Michael Uchida. Daniel H. Kim. <laughs> Melissa Ann Ford. Kristen Smurhall. Kevin Blake. Melody Puffer. <laughs> Ilana Leone. Tan Cow. Martha Eleanor Davis. Olivier Carteré. <laughs> Peter Martin.
Martinez Fonts. Jeffrey Decker. Chinson Lee. Michael Cole. <laughs> Madhu Ranjan. Sonali Putel. <laughs> Eric Hodes. Shizuki Imeniki. Wild <laughs> Hallie Higby. Avi Bharat.
Thomas Emil Grenville. Andrew McNeil. Mohsen Imam. Bahad Alam. Tansy Brook. Brendan Bow. Niloy Sen. Unj Yamsani. Mahesh Pobodesi. Granville Valentine.
Joshua Romanek. Kelsey Pierce. Jennifer Peterson. Rika Lidstrom. Jing Stella Wang. James Burke. Dinesh Kumar. David Kwan. Ben Brasher. Tyson Christopher Troutman. Sally Wu.
Ashraf El Nakal. Hari Sridivasan. <laughs> Sean Higby. Praveen Sampath. Gorget Tandy. Christopher Toussaint. Eli Andrews. John C. Ilya. Will all the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration please rise? <laughs> by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the President of the University of California and the Chancellor of UC Berkeley, I grant you the degree Master of Business Administration. Congratulations to you. Please be seated, thank you. It is now official. All of the graduate here have commenced a new lifelong relationship as alumni with this institution, Berkeley Haas. We welcome you, of course, to this distinction and to this even larger family. 
Here are a few things to think about as alumni. We lean into one another. We support one another. You used the phrase in your own presentations. We have each other's backs. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the institutions that matter to us, whatever those might be, we make sure that they're going to be healthy for the future. We give back to the people we are around. We give back to the institutions that are projecting the future we want to see happen. And we do this not just because we share affiliations, but because we share values. That is the real glue. Great leaders give back by engaging with our alumni network, both taking from it, of course, and giving back into it. This is important, providing opportunities for others, and when you need them, of course, sourcing them from that remarkable worldwide network. Great leaders give back by steering future talent who share our values to the school and also by hiring Haas because we know the fit is right. Again, the values are shared. Great leaders give back by joining the long chain of past alumni who have invested their financial resources too in making the program and the school so valuable and from which we all benefit so greatly and that wonderful new building is but one example. I bring this ceremony to a close now. Please remain seated as the faculty and new graduates process outside the hall. We invite you all to enjoy the beautiful Hertz Hall venue for photo opportunities for your new graduates. We, together, are full of pride at your achievements here today. We eagerly anticipate the great accomplishments in the future. We, society, is going to need a lot from you, and you have what it takes. You have our best wishes for success. Congratulations to all of you, and thanks to all of you for coming today.